Yeah, all right. Yeah, I've been asked to speak with you today about rational cost analysis. I think all the fun topics were taken, so I, I get this one for you. But it is a fascinating topic. I've learned a lot about it over the last year or so, and um, it can be very, very meaningful to your business if, if applied correctly. I spoke with some of you yesterday in the breakout session, um, went through some of this spiel, and for those of you who saw that yesterday, I, I appreciate you just stay seated and not get up and leave, that's embarrassing. Um, but about a year ago, uh, Dr. Brock came up to me and uh, we actually were the customer site and after the customer visit uh, in which we were trying to explain the concept of total cost of ownership to the client, um, he came to me and said, Mark, I'd really like you to look at this and, and uh, go do some research, find out what's in the industry, how do we tell the story better, because we inherently know that our, our solutions are better and that uh, they will impact your business's bottom line uh, in a more favorable way than our competitors. But that is a very difficult uh, story to tell. And you may wonder why is uh, you know Kern doing this? We're not a consulting company or an accounting firm. Uh, it is to help uh, customers and us uh, make get you to, uh, good information to make decisions. If we don't do that, um, we won't get a sale, and we like sales. And you may make a decision that you think is optimal for your business, and in fact, it is not. You know, and um, with the very best of intentions, you're just not armed with the right information. So, I dug into this, and um, um, this was his challenge to me was prove it. And we knew it, um, it's sort of a you get what you pay for kind of a thing, but uh, it's difficult to prove. There are so many variables. And these are just going to flash up here if this is working correctly. But when you try to consolidate all of these ideas into a uh, in variables, they all affect your bottom line and they all have impacts to the equipment selection and your equipment selection has impact on these costs. So it is very difficult to figure out meaningfully with any kind of generic tool what is the total cost to your business to acquire some of these very expensive assets. And um, these are just a few of them. They're actually, I could, I could fill that page up plus some, you know, with um, all the variables we've analyzed. So it was a daunting challenge when he asked me to go look at this, put something together that would actually tell this story. So I stepped back and, and actually took a look at the total cost of ownership definition. This is Wikipedia's. They talk about it being a financial estimate uh, for purpose to help consumers and enterprise managers determine direct and indirect cost of product system. I didn't frankly care for that uh, definition all that well. It really didn't fit with the challenge Tom had given me. So I want to be honest to tell you, this is, this is more how we see it. It's really a very comprehensive approach to cost analysis to accurately evaluate and measure the relevant costs of acquiring, operating, and maintaining assets, personal or professional. I do, do this at home now. I drive my wife crazy. I'll do TCO analysis on toilet paper. She says, just buy the Charmin, you know, leave it alone. But uh, really, this can be applied, and I have sort of gone overboard with it. Um, but this is a few, a few key things here. This is relevant costs. So it's not the same in every business. I, as you'll see, you, you get into this and you, you have to determine, based on your business and your business environment, what costs are being impacted, which ones are relevant to you, which may be very different than the guy down the street. Um, and this is also not just about acquiring the asset, but operating it and maintaining it over the course of its life. And personal or professional, as I pointed out. So I'm going to use an example I think most of us can relate to on the personal side. This is my son, Brandon. Uh, Brandon was recently uh, looking for a new car, and uh, he had gone out and looked and looked and looked. He'd finally narrowed it down to two cars. He's a young single guy, and um, he, of course, one of them was going to be a sports car. So he he looked at a used sports car with about 65,000 miles on it, and um, he, the other car was a, a new um, Honda Accord, a little four-cylinder. You know, the sports car was obviously big engine, fast, 
uh, appealing to his friends and, and f female friends especially. And uh, this was not all that exciting to him, but uh, he came to me and he knew I was into this total cost of ownership thing and he, he wanted to run his decision by me to you know, make me proud of him. As he pointed out to me, he was, he's trying to save money to put a down payment on a house. So we live out in, in Arizona. So this was a picture of the house he was interested in. And he said, you know, uh, Dad, the, I've looked at it and I've studied it. And, you know, the sports car is it's cheaper. As much as I would like the new car, you know, this is $15,000 less expensive. So as, as painful as it is to not buy the new car, I'm going to suffer and buy the, the sports car. Put the 15000 toward the house. What do you think? You know, I think at that point he expected me to congratulate him on his selflessness and analysis. But I said, why don't we take a look at it and um, just do a quick total cost of ownership on these two and just see. What we did is we actually looked at the, the available financing on the used car and calculated the number of years we're going to finance it, turned that into a payment. Uh, we then got uh, insurance rates for a sports car for a young single guy. We calculated based on uh, the estimated mileage of that car and how many miles we thought he'd be driving, what the gasoline expense would be every month. Um, maintenance, tire replacement, you know, the body work that uh, was going to have to be done. Uh, some of these are lump sum one-time expenditures uh, that we had to spread out, turn into a monthly amount, just to get a, a, an apples to apples comparison. But when we did that, the, the cost to own and operate this car, the course of the life of it, was about $1,300 a month. He thought that sounded pretty good. The little Honda, um, again, it, it, a little four-cylinder car, the insurance on it was not nearly as bad. There was better financing available on it because it was new. And uh, insurance was, was uh, again, not a, not a big point. The gasoline, this thing will go forever without filling it up, so uh, gasoline advantage was significantly in his favor. And maintenance, uh, there were no surprises with regard to, hey, you need a new timing belt, you know, because you've got 70,000 miles on the car. So uh, a much lower cost overall in many regards than the, um, than the sports car. But when we did the calculation, I think I'm missing this slide actually just with the number. This car came in at just under $1,100 a month. So, I told Brandon, if you look at the, the course of the life of these two cars, you're not going to save 15000 by buying the cheaper one, you're going to save 22000 by buying the new one. And uh, he couldn't argue with me, so you can guess what he's driving today. He hated me at the time, but he has thanked me a thousand times since then. He loves his car now. You can apply this same logic, though, in a production mail world, and I just randomly picked two vendor names, Vendor K and Vendor P. Um, vendor K proposed to a customer four systems, combination of two systems running at 33,000 pieces per hour, two systems running at 26,000 per hour. And uh, the total cost on these was $3.1 million. Competitor came in, Vendor P, they told the customer they could do it better, faster, cheaper, and um, they were going to sell them five systems, three running at 24000 and one running at 14000 or so. So um, they said overall our cost is $2.6 million, way cheaper than that Vendor K product. You should buy from us. I'm sorry, I, I need some water. I feel like Mark Rubio. So the conventional logic would be um, buy from Vendor P, save the half million dollars and you know everybody's happy. The Vendor P sales guy's out there buying lunch for everyone, gets the big promotion and everybody's uh, having a good time. Six months later, I think this guy's in the audience today, the head guy gets a training course on total cost of ownership. And he's not real happy about what's happened. So uh, this is the analysis he did on that, th that decision. When you look at the, um, the 
depreciation expense of the machines, which is how this translates in terms of how it hits your financial statements, your actual income statements, right? Not the cash outlay, this is actually how it hits your income statement. You look at depreciation, the labor, running three shifts today, supervision of that labor, maintenance contract, floor space, which is a, a big point, and I'll talk real briefly about that. Um, a lot of companies there are being asked to do more and more with less and less and consolidate, get smaller, fewer facilities, uh, less room within facilities to free it up for other purposes. So there's, there's great value in floor space. So the, uh, sometimes when you're making an individual decision about what you're buying today, that decision today may not free up the whole facility for you, but it is one step toward freeing up a facility for you. And if that's your ultimate goal, you need to somehow factor that in to your thinking and assign it some value so that uh, you can make a good decision today toward the right ultimate environment that you're building. Um, but when you look at this, uh, the power consumption, when you look at the power ratings of the systems and how much electricity they consume both to operate the systems and the uh, heating, venting, air conditioning um, power requirements and a lot of other things. The, uh, damaged pieces that the system causes that have to be reproduced and, and, and inserted. And many, many others, missed SLAs, but he didn't consider these. He just looked at the things he could calculate fairly quickly. And the monthly cost of the vendor case solution was about $295,000. He did the very same analysis using exactly the same formula and logic for vendor P. And as you can see, um, you get a lower depreciation expense because you save some money up front. But you could eliminate that. That's what I tell people. Vendor P and all their other uh, friends out in the marketplace can give you these systems for free. And you would still make a better decision going with Vendor K because this is the impact of the bottom line. Um, 345 per month was what the total cost of ownership analysis um, using exactly the same formula and logic on every point uh, for vendor P. So again, while the conventional logic, just like the car earlier, would be buy for vendor P and save the half million dollars, in fact, with total cost of ownership, you buy from vendor K, and in the very first year, you would save 688,000 conservatively. And uh, over the course of 10 years, uh, about $10 million, and this has no time value of money built into it, so it would actually be, if you apply your your internal rate of return to this, it's significantly higher, but um, just in terms of what's easy to defend, about $10 million over 10 years for this decision. Right. Come on, man. Is this real? It's, it's good to be skeptical and challenge this, but I want to give you one example, actually, how, the, how one variable in all this can affect the total cost of ownership, and there are many. That guy looks familiar, doesn't he? That's George. We've got, um, what I try to do here, and it's a difficult concept to explain, I'm trying to equate from a financial statement impact what a single headcount, a single FTI operator, his impact, that impact to your bottom line, and its um, financial equivalent of a capital asset purchase, or think of it as a difference in price, right? So if, if one vendor is, is offering a system or a combination of systems that requires six operators and we're, or another vendor K perhaps is, is uh, given you a system solution that only requires five operators, what's that worth? You know, would you be willing to pay extra for that? How much would you be willing to pay extra for that? So that's really what this analysis is trying to do. And if you're, if you're applying that to one shift over the course of five years, if you're running one shift, so you're, hitting, you're getting one FTE per day, one eight hour uh, shift, and you're spreading, you're looking at a five year life, you can see that the price difference that's justified and the headings, I apologize, are not lined up, uh, is about $275,000. So uh, it, it is a wash at 275. So if a price is $275,000 higher and you're running one shift, um, that is the financial equivalent, the exact same effect on your bottom line. Um, so you would, if somebody's a quarter million dollars 
higher, you would still want to buy the, the more expensive one. In fact, these are hard dollars to your bottom line. And you can see how it escalates over seven years and 10 years and two and three shifts, because if you're running two shifts, obviously you've got that operator on every shift, that incremental operator on every shift. So over the course of three shifts in a 10 year life, one person, this is one, one difference in, in FTE, in terms of financial impact, $1.46 million in what you could justify in, in terms of a price difference. So that's the CFO there, whacking George over the head, the operator. And I can walk anybody through the details of this if they'd like to. I'll show you how I reverse engineered and did the, the, uh, the numbers. Now, if you look at this, there, there are essentially three system solutions represented here. There's the red ones, which is the current solution, and you've got a Bowie and a, a Pitney Bowes solution. And the number of systems are, and the number of uh, operators at the bottom. Um, so the, the analysis was done on this particular application. These are the quantity of systems and the number of operators to operate those systems necessary to address the, this application. And you can see the numbers are, rel are relative. So the first number six compares with the fourth number nine and um, the seventh number nine. And, and you can see across the board how, how they escalate. Now, each one of those headcount, you would apply the previous page analysis to, to see the financial impact. Uh, the financial equivalent impact of a of a cost uh, financial cost difference on the, the capital purchase. Does that make sense? Do I need to cover that? Okay. So it's dramatic. That's the point. There's you know when you start looking at labor costs and how they stay in your books forever and um, the equivalent of that with uh, capital asset purchases, it's a no brainer. So the. TCO tools that are available out there really should do a few things. You know, they, they need to consider as many variables as possible. They also need to look at a variety of um, volume levels. Uh, so they look at your current volume as well as your projected volumes. And hopefully your projected volumes are getting bigger, you know, and your business is growing, not smaller. But um, sometimes it can work out that while a short-term decision looks pretty good and your lower cost of ownership at current volumes, the next increment step up, you, you have a much different situation. In this case, it would be a, a simple you know, decision. It's lower cost of ownership across the board. And this is a vendor to vendor comparison off of an actual analysis that we did uh, for a customer. It also will um, reduce it to cost per piece uh, by machine. So while there were, we were selling combinations of machine types there, as you saw, each machine can be reduced to its cost per piece, so you can actually see where your, your total cost per piece is coming. So in the end, what, the, what it would give you, if, if it's done correctly, uh, is a, a very precise, at least meaningful, um, look into what your real total cost of each mail piece going through there is, uh, including the equipment, including the electricity and, and maintenance and electricity for HVAC. All of it combined will now give you what your real costs are to your business so that when you're pricing this or estimating value to uh, your clients or to internal departments, this is, this is the type of thing you can use that for. Uh, we're skipping the, I, I have skipped the uh, conclusion slide here, but I'll cheat cheat this and walk you through it. Lessons learned, I call it, from uh, having done this work over the last year or so. The first thing is beware when you're done budgeting. There are structural limitations to the budgeting process. Um, typically budgets are done by department and a lot of costs are therefore owned by department. So what you find is people do their budgets and make their decisions based on the costs they're responsible for within their department. Uh, rarely looking across other departments or other functions to see whether or not this is a good decision for the company. It may look really good for your department, but not necessarily good for the company. The other thing about budgeting is uh, capital assets and operating assets are often, and not operating assets, but operating costs are um, budgeted separately. And they should be looked at comprehensively because one definitely impacts the other. But they're often not budgeted that way. Uh, 
Um, the next point would be that if you're going to do this uh, with total cost of ownership and really look at things in a, in a more meaningful, broader way, it needs to be a concept sort of that everybody in your company understands, at least the management team from you know your operations manager all the way up through executive management because you can often get, uh, if not everybody's bought into it or understanding it, you'll get diverging uh, points of view about what value really represents. Uh, so it's something I think sort of as a culture issue, you need to look at this and make sure that uh, everyone has bought into the concept. There are a lot of um, tools out there today which are pretty generic that I, I warn you about. Uh, they're, they're overly simplistic. You need to understand that uh, the tools that are uh, being offered to you are quality tools and, and can really do the, the correct analysis that's necessary to um, evaluate your business and make good decisions on them. And finally, you will, I guarantee you, you'll make better long-term decisions for your company and you'll be profitable long-term uh, more profitable long-term doing this type of analysis than the, the traditional, you know, price divided by the number of mail pieces. All right, I'm getting looks here from the side, so I've probably gone over on time. I appreciate all of your attention. Thank you very much. I'll be around if you, if you want to talk more about it.